Hi friends, it's Scott Giro. Have you ever seen a user interface that looks like this? Or maybe like this? And you thought there's no way you can do that in Power Apps? Well, of course, you'd be wrong. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can. So stick around. It was about a year ago that I did an episode of Powerful Devs with Greg Holman talking about how to use the Power Apps component framework to enable drag and drop scenarios. And I revisited that component that I built back then and enhanced it to enable you to do some much more sophisticated scenarios. So here is an example of one of those user interfaces. So you can take these cards in this sort of Kanban style board and I can move them around and I can if the scroll up and down in these different areas here I can edit the cards here and I can also then delete them I can also do things like edit the Kanban board title and I can add in new tasks and I can add in new lanes as well so as far as the user is concerned there would be no different about this drag and drop functionality from any other app they're using. But of course, if you've built any apps yourself, you'll know that this is very difficult to achieve. Another example would be a desk booking app where you've got all the different seat locations and you can then go and drag in different people. So there's all the different people that are assigned to different seats. And, and if you want to change them, you can move them around you can see all the locations that they're currently assigned to on that particular date. And then another one perhaps would be having the ability to schedule tasks to be performed by particular team members on a certain date. And so you can drag them in to a, a team member and then move tasks around between team members and look at the different records in priority. So we're going to build an app very similar to this. What I'm going to do first is we're going to go through in this episode of just how to use the basics of this power drag and drop component, because I've taken the component that I originally created for that powerful devs episode, and I've made it a little bit more flexible, easier to use. So we're going to install it. We're going to configure it on how to do some basic drag and drop for people in order. What I love about Power Apps is its extensibility model because you can get as far as you possibly can using PowerFX and the standard out of the box controls like the buttons and text boxes and drop downs, etc. And then when you reach a point where you want to add functionality where it's really going to make a real difference to the users, then you can create these Power Apps component framework custom controls. And the fantastic thing about these controls is that they look and feel exactly like the standard components because they can use the same libraries like Fluent and React and they have properties that you can configure inside the design surface. So you may not even know that you're using a custom control. And in fact, many of the controls that are being written now for Power Apps in custom pages are custom controls themselves. And so there is this extensibility model that allows you to continually stay in the low code world using PowerFX as the glue to bring low code and pro code together. So here I am in my environment with, that we're going to be using. And the first thing you want to do is go over to the admin center here and go down to the area which is, says Power Apps Component Framework for Canvas Apps. And it's important to turn this on before you start if you're going to be using Canvas Apps. It's not necessarily if you're going to use custom pages. And then if we go back into our environment, you can then use Import Solution so if we go back to the solutions here and go oh, import solution and browse and what you want to do is you want to go to the power drag and drop github repository and download the the latest release and so you want to download the managed version of this and then once you can once you downloaded that you go through and you can import that now i'll put the links to the github repository download page in the description of this youtube and now when you've got your app ready and you just create a blank app 
or you could start with an existing one, doesn't really matter. You go down to the Get More Components link. So it's in the left hand, you, you select on the Insert Plus and go down to the Get More Components area here. And that brings up this little Import Components dialog. And you'll want to select the Code tab at the top here. Now I've got all of the Creator Kit, PowerCat Creator Kit components in here. So it shows lots of in here, but it also shows the power drag and drop. And you'll want to pick that just to import. So let's just select that. And then once it does that, if you come over into the insert menu again and go to code components, you'll now see power drag and drop there. So if I just select that and just to pop it onto my design service, it's just just gives me an empty box right now. But what we're gonna do is we're going to bind this to a list of people, contacts in our case. So we'll go over into our data area and we'll go to add data. And I'm going to select the contacts table here to insert. What we want to do is we want to just bind this data set here to the contacts. But what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna di directly bind it to contacts in the sense that it'll be bound to the Dataverse table directly, because I want to also have the ability to control some additional information that's going to be used by this component. Now, the key thing to understand about the drag power drag and drop component is the concept of zones. Because now I can put multiple ones of these components onto the screen here. And the thing about these components is that each of them should have a zone ID. So if we select the first one, we can come into the properties here. We can say zone ID is the property. And I'm going to put this as unassigned as the first zone ID. And I'm going to come over to the second one here. And I'm going to select make this zone ID assigned. OK, and let's just uh, let's remove this one. And this basically means that when we are tracking the position of items, the zone ID will tell us where it's been moved from and to. So to create the data that we're going to bind to this, what we'll do is I'm going to create a container. This is a, a technique that I use a lot. If, if I want to have common functionality that I'm using a lot in my apps, what I'll do is I'll create a container and then I can add to that container lots of buttons. So I'll call this container functions, and then I'll call this function here, load people. And the great thing about this is that you can then set it to be invisible at the container level when you're ready. And you, but when you're debugging your app, you can just, you know, you can click on the button to, to simulate the functionality. So load people and inside this, I am going to do an operation by loading a collection of people. So I'm going to say clear collect to create a collection. And I'm going to call this coal people, collection people. And what I'm going to put into this is I'm going to let's just let's get the first N of the sort. Let's sort contacts by their full name like this. And also let's just get the first 30 of those contacts. Now in your scenario, you know, you might have some kind of searching going on or filtering based on teams or business units or whatever. And what that will do is it will give us the ability to have a load of contacts that we can bind to our list. So if we select now um, called people, we can then bind that to our data set here, our power drag and drop components. So I can select that and click call people. And I'm also going to select call people to be bound to the second one. And, and this is an important concept is that when you're doing drag and drop between zones, it's always advisable to have the same collection bound to all of your zones. Yes, you can bind different collections to different zones and for more complex scenarios, but for simply moving things between zones, it's best to have the, the same items collection because what happens is that the, the actual control, the power drag and drop control will filter to only show the items based on the zone that they're assigning to. So how does it know which zone that each of these items are bound to? Well, if you notice that there is this little little message, you can see here that it's saying, please set both the ID column and the zone column. And so this is how the power drag and drop component knows 
both the ID of the item so that it can report on the unique identifier so you can use it in your code and then also which column it's going to use to identify the zone that it's currently residing in. And so we can set those, but obviously we actually have to create those columns first, and which is why we're binding this to a collection rather than directly to the contacts, because we want to actually go and add in. So we use add columns like this as a function that we can add additional, additional columns to our data set here. And I'm going to give it a zone, let's say zone here, and let's keep it by default unassigned okay because that was if you remember that was the zone of our first our first power drag and drop component was unassigned clearly if you were binding this to a data set you would derive this zone information from information that's stored in dataverse and we'll be looking at that in, in subsequent videos like where, where we had that kanban bo board the zone id was actually the id of the the lane that that particular task was residing in let's go and look at how that works so let's go into advanced here and if i come down uh, let's just run that so that we get the data if I come down into my advanced panel here and scroll all the way down, you will see the items area and two additional properties called ID column and zone column. And that's where that's what that message is asking for. So I'm going to set this to the first one, the ID will be the contact ID. That's the unique unique identifier of each of the rows. And then of course we've we've added this column called zone. And so what it's already started to do, you can see here, it's now created me lots of little items here, little rows. It's not displaying any information. So why is it not displaying any, us any information? Well, that is because if we look here over at the items, just below it, we've got this edit on the field. And so if we select that, what we've got the ability to do is add field. So sometimes it, it, it grays that out. So I'll just select that again and say add field. And so what we can now just do is specify the field that we want to display in each of these items. So I'm going to display the, I'm going to have the full name. So if we just do that, then, and now run this, you can see immediately we've got a set of items. We've got a scroll bar because the, the, it's, it's uh, scrolling to fit into the, the height of the actual control. And what we can start to do is now decide on how we want to drag and drop. Now, if I tr select this and move, try and drag these around, it's not working. I, I can't drag and drop because one thing further with these zones you have to do is you have to nominate one control to be your master zone within all of the groups that you're going to be doing dragging and dropping around with all the zones. Now, of course, more complex scenarios, you may have different groups of zones where you can drag and drop items. So maybe you've got people at the top and then you've got the bottom, you've got tasks that you can drag and drop. So it's really one master zone per groups of items that you can drag between. And so I'm going to nominate this item here, this, this control here as being my master zone. So I select turn master zone on. And now if I run, you can see I can already start to do dragging and dropping, which is good. So I can, I can reorder these things. So if I put Susan at the top and Jim down at the bottom, I've already got reordering functionality, dragging, dropping. But I, what I can't do is I can't drag and drop into this area here. And the reason that is, is that as well as the zone ID on our master drop zone, we've also got this other property called other drop zone IDs. And what this is asking for is, is a comma separated list. You can see the little tooltip there. So if we look at this one, this was called assigned. So if I, if I select in my master drop zone, put assigned there, now what this is going to allow me to do is if I also select in here because obviously we've got this message at the top here and I come down and, and do the same thing as we had before so mark this as contact ID and we also put the zone column as well and what we'll also need to do is define the items as well I did the same thing so select the call people replace columns add and I'm going to put the full name like that Okay, and so now, all being well, I should be able to drag between these items, which is cool, drag between these different zones. So that it's, what's happened is the master zone is now in control of 
the uh, management of this whole drag and drop functionality. Of course, what I can do is I can do some basic styling on these, these items. I could say, let's make the border radius of the overall items, I don't know, two, and I'm going to make the border color just black like that. And let's, let's make the item background color just EA, EA, EA. Okay, and so if we just there, toggle that, then now you can see you've got the style. So, but if I drag this over, can you see it's actually preserving the style of the source? It's not gonna re-render on the right-hand side because in order to do that, we have to then control the refresh of these items. So let's just quickly create a very simple reset functionality. So I'm going to use a context variable called drag drop event and call this a reset and it's important to add on a little bit of a random seed onto the end of this uh, this context variable every time we set it to make sure it's unique so it triggers an on change and i'm going to go into the drag drop component and i'm going to set the input event so i'm just going to search it makes it easier yeah so input and then i'm going to set that like that and i'm going to do the same thing on the other one as well so it resets that like that so now when I click load people, it will go and reset the items to be where they were originally. And any of the, the styles will also get reset. So if we wanted to create like a more sophisticated template, VS Code is great for writing HTML. I mean, other HTML editors are available. I mean, there's online editors as well, or you could even just do it inside Power Apps directly. But I use a an extension for VS Code. VS Code is just a free download and you can install this live preview extension. And what this allows us to do is to click here and say show preview. And it kind of gives me this ability to immediately see it. But really HTML is just, you could just even do this in an HTML text document and then just open it up in the browser and refresh it. And that, and that would also do the same thing. So what I've got here is I'm gonna show like a little persona type style for each of these people. So I've created a very, very simple structure of HTML. So div is just a, a container for some content. And what we can do to these different divs is add style. So I'm gonna go and add at the root here, just some style to do some basic layout. So what this allows us, gives me the ability to do is set the, the width and so it's always going to fill the, the maximum width available. And it's this going to use display flex. A flex box is great because it allows us to do much more sophisticated layouts that we, where we can center things vertically, horizontally, we can wrap things. And so by defining the, the parent div as a flex, we can do things like align item center. So it's going to vertically align all the items no matter how high they are. And then on this second one here, this is gonna be the little circle on the persona. And so if I put style here, I can add in a load of different styles here. And I'm just going to paste in some styles that I have predefined here and walk through what these do. So border radius is giving this sort of this clip so you, you can see here that we've got this, this uh, clip circle. And so by setting the border radius to 50%, it means that the, the little rounding around the corners of a, what would normally be a square are set to completely be half of the, the height and the width. So it looks like it's a circle. If I, if I change this to 20, it would have sort of like this rectangular effect with rounded corners. By setting it to 50, it makes it look like a circle. And then I'm giving it the height and the width and then I've created like a black background image URL. It's just my own profile picture. And then I'm saying this is a flex. So I'm aligning centers items again. So this is giving the ability to also put some initials in here. So you can see here there's the initials. So I want to have the dynamically based on if there's an, a, an image for a contact, then I can display that. Otherwise, I'll just display their initials. And then obviously we want to pick the the background color. I'm just using crimson, but you know, we, we eventually we're going to want to dynamically pick that up. I'm going to put that to cornflower blue. So if I removed that there, you can now see you get a much more sort of a simpler persona style image. So that's all good. Now let's let's add this template into our our item template. Now the thing is if in in order to do that we can't just simply put SD in Scott Jiro. We what we have to do is we have to cut, pick out 
dynamic content. And the way we use that is that we, we're using something called a language called handlebars. And the reason it's called handlebars is you use these double curly braces that kind of look like handlebars, I suppose. And so what it allows us to do is put in the name of the the item field that we're going to use. Remember, we set the fields for each of the items. Well, here we're actually going to pick that out to say, I, so I can put here initials like that. And I can, in here, I can say, right, well, I'm going to put curly braces and I'm going to put full name. And, and so for the, the background image, rather than having a, you know, static image, I can then pull out the persona image and put that inside the URL bracket. So it can dynamically load that. But what you need to do now is just make sure that that data is available for each of these items inside your power app. So if we come back into our app here and if we go into our load people function at the moment we've just added in the zone but what we're going to do is we're going to add in a couple more columns so what we've got here is a contact and I'm going to actually name this as contact so that it can pick it out easily and that means that we've now got this let's format this a little bit so if we're saying if the image is not blank and we're going to use this json function to convert the entity image which we can use in our html in our background image so it kind of takes the binary data and it just serializes it as a base64 encoded string which we can then insert as the background image we've also then got this initials here and what, we, what we're doing here is we're just simply picking out the first name, first character of the first name and the first character of the last name. Fairly straightforward stuff. So once we've got that, we can come over into our drag drop component and go to edit. And let's just select cold people to replace fields and I'll just load that data. And if we add in, so we, now what we want is we want the, the full name and we also want the image the person image and we also want the initials as well there we go so let's add that in so now we've got that you can see here we've got all of this data so we've got our first name we've got this big long string which is the the uh, base 64 encoded image and then we've got the initials and that allows us then to pick those out in our template so if we go back into our template, the only last thing to do is, of course, we don't always want to show the, the initials. We want to sometimes, if there's a persona image, we don't want to show the initials because it will just overlay on top of it. So it's like this is like a if then else kind of piece of logic that you can get in this, uh, this handlebars language. So I'm going to grab that as a string and go back into my app and let's look at the properties here if we go into item template search for that there we go we, there we have it and it's actually also in the main area here you can see at the moment it's got no value so what i can do is i can just paste that in to my little area here and suddenly we've got our little persona images showing up now we don't really want the background so i can i could remove the background because that doesn't, doesn't really help us so i'm going to remove that make that transparent like that and there we go we've got the ability now to move these nice little persona images so this is what gives us this complete flexibility with this control is i can create these html templated items and drag them around we can also have little action buttons in there as well and i'll show you how that works which is similar to where we had the delete and the edit buttons in our kanban board items but this is showing up until you know just that this basic functionality which you can already see how you can make some fairly sophisticated applications the last thing i wanted to show you in this video is how you can then respond to changes now there is an event so if you come over into the master properties here and clear the search you can see at the top here we've got we've got a on drop event here this is some functionality that we can perform when the drop had happens and and the key thing to remember here is that your on drop event will only fire in your master drop zone and then you've got properties like dropped item id drop position drop source drop target all those kind of things so that's that's useful for sort of responding to individual item drop events but i 
I find that actually it's more powerful to use, there is a property called current items, which maintains the state of the items as they're dragged and dropped around. So if I put in a, a vertical gallery here, let's just uh, let's put that like, actually, no, let's put a data table. Let's see how that works. And then down here, what we can do is we can now bind this to, and let's, Let's call this drag drop master like that. And then bind this, these items to drag drop items. And you can see here, this has got current items like that. And let's define the fields that we're going to show item ID. Then we've got the, the original drop zone ID and then the drop zone ID. And then we've got these additional little flags here has moved and position and has moved zone. So if I run this, you can see here we've got, they're currently in the unassigned zone. So this first one here, if I drag this over to this other one here, you'll, you'll see that actually this will, you can see down here at the bottom, this is now changed to assigned. So there's a flag saying has moved position, has moved zone. And if I just carry on moving these, you can see that we've got this whole state management going on. If I wanted to have like a save event or something like that, I could then iterate through this collection and easily find out what's happened. And if I move it back again, you can see here that it's, you know, it's moved it back to the original drop zone. But of course it may have moved position, you know, because I may have moved it around inside these items. There is actually a property on, on it, which you can say to preserve the sort. So I could disable sort, which will prevent me from actually changing that sort location. So if I reset this and I try and move these around, you can see it, it just always moves it back. So there we have it. That's the basic functionality. Please like and subscribe to this channel if you want to hear more about this component and how to create more complicated applications and download it, give it a go. Let me know in the comments. I love hearing how people use my videos and use the techniques that I describe. And did I mention, please subscribe and like, that'd be fantastic. So until next time, have a great rest of your day. Cheers.